Hello, it's time for July 2021 Beauty Favorites and Fails, and I have more products in this video to share with you than I've had in any other monthly Beauty Favorites and Fails in 2021 so far. I don't know what happened in July. I tried a lot, both beauty and lifestyle. There was some good, there was some bad, and I do have quite a few fails in this video too. I will do my best to keep my thoughts on each product very streamlined and concise so that I can get through all of these products and not have the video be an hour long. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new and let's go ahead and get started. I tried several new brands in July. One of those is Makeup by Mario. I have loved everything I've tried so far. Now two products products, including this powder blush that I'm holding up. I used in my trying new makeup video where I shared more detail and my thoughts on them. My thoughts have not changed. Actually, every product that I tried in that video that I liked in the end or already had thoughts on is also a favorite for me this month, but I didn't want to duplicate things that closely. So if you want to see more about the bronzer or the blush for Makeup by Mario, along with a whole host of other products, check out the video linked down below in my description box, also up here in the corner. But what I didn't show in that video was the stick bronzer and the stick blush. I have the blush in soft coral and the bronzer in medium, and they both have the stick on one end and this blending brush on the other, which I think is so clever. This is the blush that I have on today, and I think it's stunning, especially this time of year. And you can see it's not flat at all. It gives this nice radiance to the cheek, but it's natural. It's also not sticky, and these also last throughout the day. I mean, this will look exactly like this at the end of the day, which is not something I can say for every cream product out there, especially in the heat and humidity of New Orleans where I live, and it's pretty brutal right now. These two stick products, along with the powder, blush, and bronzer, were just amazing discoveries for me this month. This next product is kind of a surprise hit for me. I just don't really get excited over lip masks that much, but this one from Bare Minerals, this ageless phyto retinol lip mask has really impressed me. This is plant-based and it gives you an effective alternative to retinol for the lips. It's supposed to deeply hydrate, soften and renew and just help the look of those fine lines that we all get on our lips as we get older. I love the way this it lasts all night, but it's not sticky. I, it doesn't disappear by morning time. There's a slight natural scent to it, but it is very, very faint. It's nothing obtrusive. I don't taste it when I have it on. I really love this for a nighttime treatment and have been dipping into it quite a bit. Next up is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil. I have the shade Yogurt. I love a good stick eyeshadow, so easy to swipe on and blend out and just be done. I especially love it when I can get it for a good price. By the way, all these products, favorites and fails will be linked down below and below that product section and what I'm wearing, I will also have my shop list link where you can see everything I've shown and worn in this video and you'll see all the pictures and you can also shop from there. It's just everything kind of all together. There are a couple of reasons why this didn't work out for me. Number one is the packaging. It is a pencil, but it's in this plastic casing, even up here, it's plastic. So I tried to twist it at the bottom. It would twist, but it was really, really difficult and nothing happened. I could not figure out what was going on, why this wouldn't come up. I thought I had a defective one. So I was really confused because it, it shouldn't be a difficult thing to figure out how to get more product, right? In Ulta's Q&A, the top question that people had was how to get more product out of this because no one could figure out how to twist it. So they do go in and answer and say that you can use a regular sharpener on this, even though it is hard plastic. I have never heard of such a thing. Have you? I have not been brave enough to try it because because I feel like it's gonna ruin my sharpener if I try to insert hard plastic and sharpen it. My other issue is that this remains very sticky on my eyelids and in this heat and humidity right now, I just hated the way it felt. It also creased really badly, so it just didn't wear well. So this was a big fail for me in July. When you're doing your makeup, sometimes you need to change colors or get pigment or glitter particles, shimmer particles off of your brush really quickly, so using a product like this is you know typically what's used but Sigma introduced their Sigma switch 
brush cleaner. It's silicone. I've really been enjoying this. I've been using it constantly to clean off my brushes in between applications if I'm just not ready to wash them, you know. I love the different textures for the different types of brushes and that it's labeled. I mean, you can use it however you want. You don't have to follow the labels. I also love the surface area and how you can flip it over. I can just use this so easily. Now, these are really good. Don't get me wrong. I've always liked them, but I just feel like this has kind of changed my game a little bit and it also cleans easier than the the products that I was using before. So yeah, this was a win. I've had this product in my makeup stash for a while. I think I got it after the peak of summertime last year. And so I really have not given it a good test until just now. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter waterproof setting powder. Now, before I get into the shade, I just have to tell you what a pleasant surprise this has been. It's such a challenge for me where I live with the extreme heat and humidity. You know, you beat up with sweat just walking from your car into a building and to find products that stay on. It's, you know, kind of a miracle actually. This is also really good if you're just wanting to even things out or put on a little something and then seal it in before you get wet. They created this to blur imperfections and help combat shine and to last on the skin up to 11 hours. This is a great powder. It also does not accentuate anything bad. I have used this underneath my eyes to, you know, kind of lock in my concealer. I can set with this. I can touch up with this and it just ends up looking really nice and natural. This comes in this one shade. I feel like if you're very pale, this is going to definitely give you some tint but if you are light medium skin tone like I am, it's invisible. I think if you have deeper skin tones, this would also be a really nice translucent option for you to use. So if you're wanting something for summertime that's not gonna melt off, I think this is a really good option. I have never messed with a waterproof powder before and have just been pleasantly surprised. I do think I'm the last person on earth that's tried the e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist. When this first came out, every time I would try to hunt for it in person, I just couldn't find it in any store and I I checked a couple times online, it was out of stock. So I was walking through Target at the beginning of the month and here it was. So I decided to pick it up. This saved me on our beach trip. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but I was using a sunscreen that previously had worked for me. It's a mattifying one. I talk about that in my products that surprise me video. I'll also link that down in the description box as well as up in the corner. It was accentuating a lot of flakes on my skin. I would spritz this over it and it took it away. It smells heavenly. It was very appropriate to have at the beach. I could put it on in the morning to hydrate before I put on any skin care and it just worked really nicely and I just I love it. This is one of my favorite mists. Hydrates skin and refreshes makeup with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. The spritzer is also nice. A lot of times that can be the whole issue with not liking a mist. I'm really sad that I didn't try this way back when and just remembered about trying it because uh, I love it. Bare Minerals just launched six different mineralist eyeshadow palettes. I was really excited when I got these because I typically have really good luck with Bare Minerals eyeshadows. These palettes in particular were just huge hits for me, among my favorites actually. These all have eco-friendly packaging and they're kind of styled like little books. So I liked that. I've just found that there's a lot of inconsistencies with the formulas between palettes as well as within some of the palettes. There are some shadows that I can barely get any pigment out of which is great if you really wanna sit there and build and build and build. And then some are decently pigmented, although you do get quite a bit of fallout. I've also found inconsistencies with these shimmers. Some are nice and smooth, while others are a little chunky, a little powdery looking. I also find that the color stories aren't super inspiring in a lot of these, and that might be part of my issue. Some may speak to you. I just don't find them tremendously inspiring. So I was a little bit disappointed with these because I don't know, I just really love Bare Minerals overall. I just think they could have done a little bit better with creating complete palettes that have a little bit more contrast to give you more varied looks. So I don't know if that's, you know, just a huge fail or just kind of a, a, a disappointment. Either way, I just wasn't, wasn't thrilled with this launch. I picked up two Selfless by Hiram products. He launched a skincare line with the Inky List. The cleanser is this Sentinella and green tea cleanser. It's supposed to be used morning and night and cleanse your skin without stripping. 
I do find that to be the case. I've really enjoyed this. I don't notice a scent. The ingredients are supposed to be soothing if you have irritated skin and just, you know, gentle. It's also suited for all skin types and I do agree with that. It cleanses thoroughly without stripping. Now at night, I do use a makeup remover first because I don't think this cuts it, but I've been using this pretty consistently in July to test it out and I really enjoy it. I didn't really know what to expect from the niacinamide and maracuja moisturizer. I've been using this during the day because I need something a little bit heavier at night. This is supposed to provide skin barrier support and the niacinamide is supposed to reduce oiliness on the skin as well as improve the appearance of pores. I always love some niacinamide, but I know that ingredient does not work for everyone. There is no added fragrance, but there's a very slight herbal scent behind it. You can almost not smell it at all. It's just very lightweight gel cream. It absorbs into the skin nicely. And I find, especially this time of year when I want a lighter moisturizer in the summer, this is working great to provide enough hydration, but without adding shine to my oily combination skin. It's also hydrating enough for any surface dehydration that I have. It feels really nice and lightweight on the skin. The price point is nice on both of these and they've been hits for me. So one of my favorite brushes from Refer is this tiny eyeliner brush. It has been added to the Refer concept store. If you go to the top of their main page and hit concept store, there's so many things that are on deep discount, but they don't stay there forever. This is one, I want to say it's like $15. I've been trying some other Refer brushes. There is a tight line brush that's on there. I want to say this is $10 right now. And their bronzer brush that I just tried out for the first time in July, but I've heard so much hype about it. This is brush number 22. It is almost half off right now through the concept store. I've also been reaching for this number five blush brush quite a bit. All of them are just really soft and just have the appropriate density for what they're supposed to do. I have a lot more here that I've been playing with that I've been trying and liking. I have the link for Refer down below in the description box. And right next to the concept store at the top of the page, there's a section that's called discounts. They have their entire flagship brush set. I want to say it's like half off if you're needing to build your collection. I mean, there's just some really great deals if you browse around in the different sections. And of course, my favorite favorite eyelash curler is there as well. I believe it's still in the concept store. I'm not sure though. In July, I also tested out this slim brow pencil from Physicians Formula. I have the shade taupe. I love a slim brow pencil. I have very sparse, uneven brows, and I just need something slim to mimic a brow hair for those areas where I just don't have brow hairs. I was excited about trying this, but I find this to be a waxy formula that takes a little bit of pressure to apply as opposed to a lot of the ones that I have that just glide on and still last all day. So I would say this was kind of a minor fail. Some people really like waxy brow pencils. I just find that they're a lot of effort and when I'm doing my brows, they already take a long time and I want to be able to do them as quickly as possible. I did not love this. It's not often that I have a fail from ColourPop, but I do this month. The Going Coconuts palette. I kept hearing all the raves about it, uh, you know, forever, and I finally decided to get it. With all of my previous ColourPop palettes, no matter the size, no matter if they were smaller or bigger, I've felt like if someone tried any of those for the first time, they would be really impressed with ColourPop quality. It would keep them coming back for more. And that's why I keep going back for more because I've been so impressed with the quality. The mattes blend out easily and give nice pigment, but allow you to build them. You know, they don't go in too heavy and the shimmers are beautiful. I mean, there are higher end products that don't give me the effect that I get from a lot of ColourPop shadows. This was not one of those palettes. I immediately thought that if this was somebody's first time trying ColourPop, they would probably be a little disappointed and want to know what all the hype was about. The way I want to use this palette is to take this middle shade right here on my lid. I can, you know, play around with all the other ones. This middle shadow is so chunky and has so much fallout and it just doesn't look smooth on the eyelid. I was really disappointed. I barely get any pigment from this shade right here. I just find this to be a very inconsistent palette overall. I'm not going to go into every single shade in this palette. I just find it to be not the same quality that I'm used to and not as blendable as I'm used to. Overall, I really love ColourPop. I have a lot of their products, but this one fell flat. My hair is not naturally straight. Even when I wear it straight, I need to smooth it and kind of change directions of some sections of hair. I had a T3 flat iron for years that was dying and took some suggestions from you on Instagram about what to replace it with. And I ended up replacing it with the new 
ish t3 one inch lucia i was gonna go with a different brand but then i thought you know that other one worked really well so i'll just stick with that and right after that i got my first PR shipment from T3, which I was really excited about. It included this compact hair dryer, which I'll talk about in a minute. You know, I love my Dyson, so I have some thoughts on that. First off, there are nine heat settings, which I think is amazing for a flat iron. And you're probably wondering, where are they? When you plug this in, the power button lights up, you hold your finger on it, and then everything illuminates. Now, when you first get it, you are encouraged to program in your hair type, texture, and length. And it gives you an appropriate setting based on your stats, and it locks that in. So you you don't have to redo it. You can override that if you have certain settings you want to use though. It heats up very quickly. I like the longer plates. It doesn't grab my hair, pull on any stray hairs or anything like that. I've had flat irons that did that and that is not fun. It glides through the hair really nicely. Last night I air dried my hair and that is not pretty and I slept on it and when I woke up my hair was a hot mess and this straightened it today. Now it's probably not perfect because I have been out in heat and humidity and I didn't really touch it up after after. I am loving this purchase for me in July. Now I was really curious about the hair dryer because I love my Dyson. I just wasn't sure how this was going to compare or if I was going to like it as much, especially since the Fit is a compact hair dryer. I just find them typically to not be very powerful. Now my dryer before I got my Dyson was a T3 and I absolutely loved it. It was a full size. This nozzle is an attachment that comes with it. You don't have to have it on there. I just always use a nozzle when I'm straightening and drying my hair. This is 30% smaller and 20% lighter than a regular regular hair dryer. It uses ionic technology. It's got three heat settings and two speed settings. I've been using this exclusively since I received it and I've actually really been liking this, especially for a compact dryer. This would be great to travel with too if you don't want to pack your heavy blow dryer. You know, I'm thinking about a friend of mine that has some hand issues and drying her hair is just difficult for her because typically hair dryers are pretty heavy and they're cumbersome. This is just super easy to use because because it's so lightweight. I've been pleasantly surprised not only with that, but with how smooth my hair gets with it and how it does have nice power and heat for a small little dryer. I have a wide variety of lifestyle products in this video, more than usual. Sunglasses, swimwear, a tote, jewelry, swimsuits, sleepwear, dog toys, a candle. I can't even think of everything. So let's go ahead and get started with the jewelry that I have on. So I've been wearing this necklace combination a lot lately. I haven't really paired or layered chains together without a pendant before, but I'm liking this look. This is another look that I'm liking so much, especially for summer. I love the delicate double layered necklace paired with the white delicate pendant necklace. And I have two rings that are new to me that are different than anything that I have. I've really been enjoying them. The one that I'm wearing today kind of goes with the bracelet that I'm about to show. I mean, I feel like it does, even though they're from different collections. Uh, by the way, for some of these pieces that are Miranda Fry, I do have a 10% code for you down in my description box. So be sure and look for that if you do head over there, if you're planning on buying anything. And then I have this double band set that's just kind of delicate and flat. So they're very comfortable to wear. I've been kind of interchanging them both. This is the cuff bracelet that I was referring to. I just love this so much. It just kind of goes with everything and makes a statement. It's not too much, it's not too little. I love a good stud earring. They're delicate, they go with anything, especially if you're wearing, you know, more of a statement piece, you know, type necklace. But I got two pair and this is the first. These are these linear studs. You can kind of turn them in any way, but I like them. They're a little bit different. And I also got these tiny diamond square studs, but I just like having these for days when, you know, I just want to be very simple or casual. You know, I frequently show lifestyle products in my monthly favorites and fails because I know you enjoy seeing that, but I don't think that I have ever had a lifestyle fail before until July 2021. And here we are. So I, like the rest of you, have been hearing the hype and seeing the somersault bathing suits out there. This one right here is probably the one they're most famous for. And they also have one that is great for tall or long torso sewed people, but I read that that suit did not have much bust support. So I did not order the one piece. I did, however, do a combination of some separates. One worked out, the other two were just big flops. Now I am going to have my July Amazon best of worst of video, my everything I've bought come out. And I did actually delve into the swimsuit world on Amazon. So be sure to stay tuned to see that it's coming soon. And don't rely on notifications from YouTube, by the way, guys, they're not sending them out. If you're wanting to see 
new uploads from the people you're subscribed to. Each time you log into YouTube, head straight to the subscriptions. I keep calling it a tab, it's just a section. And you can see all of your subscribers' new uploads in order, starting with most recent. I mean, that's just what I do every time I log in and I just get new uploads every single time. I'd wanted to throw that out there because I feel like I've been getting a lot of people saying they're not getting notifications, not just from my channel, but from a lot of people. Okay, back to the somersault bathing suits. They do have tankinis and bikinis as well. I'm closer to a size four right now than I am a size six. That's another topic for another day. I have lost quite a bit of weight since April and am very, very happy. I don't know if you guys even want to hear about that or, you know, kind of what I did over 40 to lose weight. Let me know in the comments below if you do want me to, to share on that. I decided to try this asymmetrical top here, which is their two piece version of the one piece that I just showed you. I also ordered this top to go with it. I got these bottoms. I thought it would be so cute. These are the cinch bottoms, really cute. I also got them in a palm print. I just love the print. So these bottoms, I absolutely love. I do always size up in my bottoms because I have a butt. And so I got these in a size eight. I think I probably could have gotten a six, to be honest. You know, I just kind of like a little bit more coverage, but really cute and, you know, not skimpy. These, however, the two tops that I thought would give the most support out of the tops that they offered are going back. Both tops are size six. I have you know, decently sized boobs. And if you need support like I do, neither one of these are gonna give that to you. I mean, at least they didn't me. I could not get the white to stop peeking out from underneath the top. I kept messing with it, but no matter what I did, it kept peeking out from underneath. I felt the bottom part wasn't quite reaching the skin underneath the boob, you know what I mean? But if I tried a four, it was not going to cover vertically on this side the way I needed it to cover. I knew it was just gonna show too much boob. But I also just flat out didn't feel secure like I thought I would. On my chest, this top does not give the kind of coverage that it looks like it's gonna give based on the online picture. I mean, I can usually tell from an online picture how much coverage it's gonna give. Oh, no, 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 no. I had so much at the top that was exposed, it was just, just a big no. Now I didn't have a problem with the peeking out of the lining like I did the other one. The structure of these is just different. The straps are just so thin. Even if there was coverage, I just, again, didn't feel supported. I also feel like band wise, I should have done a four, but my God, the coverage would have been even less if I had ordered a four and the straps are just so thin. It's just a big no. So I was really disappointed in those. Yeah, if you have anything that needs support, I would look elsewhere, but the bottoms are great. Athleta launched some sleepwear and I had to try it. I ordered a few different things. Um, some just work out kind of okay. Others I really love. I just have an extreme love affair with Athleta. My whole closet could probably be Athleta. They have such soft, comfortable pieces. And especially compared to Lulu, when you think about how long the items last, how well they wash and dry, how how much of a variety you get, different types of clothing. I also love that they have tall versions of a lot of things. They also have plus sizes. I don't feel like a gargantuan person when I walk into Athleta <laughs> like I do when I go to Lulu because I feel like in Lulu I'm like two sizes bigger than I normally am. So first up we have the Cotton Dreams shorts and cami. This is cotton so it doesn't stretch but it's extremely soft. It's not your typical like boxer brief type cotton. Love the color that I ordered. I kind of like my nighttime wear, my sleepwear, my loungewear to be very fluid and to kind of move with me and stretch and stuff. And this is not that type of product. Now I ordered mediums in everything and I feel like I could have sized down to a small in this because the shorts are pretty oversized. And the cami, I mean, it fit pretty well, but I wonder if I could have gone a size down. So I'm glad I have it because, you know, in summertime, I like cool things. This one was not my major hit. This next set, the Nighttime Bliss, I love. Now on the shorts, I was a little worried about how short the sides were. I have a long torso. So a lot of times shirts and shorts and rompers and things like that can be shorter than what I think they're going to be. They do go kind of short on the side, but I don't usually have things sitting on my waist. I kind of pull them down lower and they have such a fluidity to them, such a softness that you can do that. Nothing's pinching you. Nothing's tight. These are so 
comfortable. The cami is wonderful too. I probably could have gone to a small, but I think they would have been too short for me. I also picked up the Nighttime Bliss joggers, just in case I didn't want to wear shorts. Really like these too. You know, if you haven't felt some of Athleta's fabrics, Power Vita, and whatever the heck they are putting in the sleepwear, it's worth trying. I am loving how thin and cool these are, yet just so comfortable. The items I just showed you are dirty, and so that's why I don't have them here to show you, but I do have the Cloud Light tee. I also got some shorts. These aren't necessarily sleepwear, but you could sleep in these and lounge around. Now I have this t-shirt in black already, so this is my second one. I also have two pairs of these shorts in black, and I just had to get them in this color. I also think I could have gotten these in a small, but you know, I don't mind. So yeah, just some great stuff from Athleta that I'm loving. Big shocker there, I know. So my face is really hard to fit with sunglasses. My face is small and it is very narrow. I can actually wear kids' sunglasses, except for the arm length. Length. It's always too short. So I lost my original crew sunglasses that I adore in the water when we were on vacation a couple weeks ago. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw my story. I was a little upset. So last week I went to crew to get a replacement. To mix it up, I ended up getting the same exact style in a different shade, a different color. There are a lot to choose from, which is one thing that I love. I was not expecting to get clear, but I brought my 16 year old with me who gives her very honest opinion and she really loved these on me. But the pair that she kept focusing on and telling me that I needed to get was this pair. I never would have picked these out if she had not been with me because I would have thought that they were just too big. These probably are normal sized on most people, but on me, they give me the oversized look that I've been looking for, but could never get from oversized glasses because they look comically big on me. So this matte oyster pearl, it goes down into an ombre, is what I used to have this pair in. So because I ended up with these, I got these in clear and I have, you know, kind of a smaller normal pair and I have a bigger, more statement pair. I normally would not buy two pairs of pricey sunglasses right in a row, but I was kind of celebrating something and I thought, you know, just going to treat myself. Sometimes you just have to do that. When we were at the beach, I had a friend there that had this tote bag that I just loved. It's so functional. These are kind of everywhere right now. And there's a reason why they are water resistant. They're neoprene. So they're lightweight and they're durable. They can hold really heavy stuff and you can fit a lot in them. So I asked her where she got her bag. She got it from this Etsy shop, which I do have links down below. I didn't want to get the same color, even though I do like turquoise. So I got the pink. You can keep the side snapped and have it be kind of a smaller tote, or you can unsnap them and have this really roomy tote. It also comes with a flat bottom piece that helps it keep its shape. And it has a little pouch too that attaches or it can come off. This would actually make a great gift. And now that I'm thinking about it, I might get a couple more and give them to people for Christmas. It's cushy, it's lightweight, there's no drawbacks to it whatsoever, and you can use this for anything. It's not a beach bag. You can use it to tote around anything in your everyday life. I've been reaching for it a ton. I love it. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen my story where I showed Luke loving his new squeaky toys. Although he hasn't really squeaked them, he's just played with them, chewed on them, tossed them around, and he lays on them like they're pillows. He is here by the way. Oh look, okay, <laughs> somebody drove and put him on alert. So there he is, this is perfect timing, Luke. These were just too cute, I could not resist. Now there is a set of three with three different flavors of this one that you can get, and I think this one just comes as a single. Again, this would be a good gift for somebody that has a dog. So cute for all you dog lovers out there, these have been a hit. I don't know what took me so long to try the linen candle from Nest. Nest is one of my favorite candle brands. Moroccan amber and holiday candles are staples for me once fall and winter hit. They have other scents that I love too. The apple one is coming to mind, but I tried one one time and I didn't really like it. That was just a scent preference. I love the way they burn evenly and how much you get from one candle. You know, this is, I think the eight ounce size. It doesn't say on the bottom, but this is just the typical regular size and it lasts so long. But I do always tell people that what they smell in the candle, like if they're in a store, when it's not lit is so much different than how the candles smell when they're lit. There's just such a beauty that comes out once they start enveloping the room with their scent. And this one is the same way. It smells nice in the jar, but in the room, it just is so 
pretty and clean, but it's not just a linen scent. There's something else to it that smells clean and comforting and creamy. I've been loving this, especially for this time of year. Each month, I give a special shout out to my Stephanie Marie Circle members who go above and beyond to support this channel and an extra shout out to the premium members who go even above that. I just truly appreciate all of you who are here watching my videos as well as my SMC members. There is information about joining the circle in the description box. Thank you all so much. I feel like I have the best community out there. You guys are amazing. I'll have my trying new makeup video here if you haven't seen it as well as some products I changed my mind about. I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're not and become a part of the Stephanie Marie family. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye!